Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming um, to the Wikia September Community Guidelines. Uh, my name is Sarah Manley, and we are about to get started. So um, I just want to say if at any time the sound is too loud or breaking up, um, please let us know, and we'll try to make some adjustments. Also, um, everyone's going to be muted here the entire time, and questions can be taken via the GoToMeeting software. So feel free to submit any questions at any time um, through the software, and we will answer them at the end. So um, thanks for joining and welcome to the September webinar, which is focused on community guidelines. Uh, I'm Sarah Manley, a director of community support here at Wikia, and today with me is Trella Rath, a Wikia community manager. And also in the background is Bert Hall, who is helping to answer questions. And I just want to start by thanking both Trella and Bert for being here and helping us out today. So today we're going to talk about community guidelines, why to create them, examples of good and not so good guidelines, and how to work with your community to establish them. At the end, like I mentioned, we'll be taking questions, so feel free to submit them and we'll answer as many um, as we can. So what do we mean by guidelines? Well, according to Wikipedia, a guideline is a statement by which to determine a course of action. Essentially, this means a guideline is similar to a rule or policy in that it provides guidance around a certain action you take. On a wiki, this may be a guideline relating to how to contribute or how to behave. So how do wikis um, and guidelines relate to each other? Many wikis have developed guidelines to help their community set certain expectations and principles. Since wikis are open to anyone to participate, guidelines can provide guidance for both new and experienced contributors to work together. Guidelines can help users to know the type of content to add, the style it should be presented in, and what is acceptable behavior within a given community. It helps to set clear expectations that everyone on a wiki is aware of. It also helps admins to maintain the wiki so that penalties such as blocks aren't seen as personal. It's important to remember though the word guide in guidelines. And by this, I mean they are to guide members of the community, but they shouldn't be held as hard and fast laws. There are always these exceptions to the rules or a new way of approaching a situation that the guidelines may not cover. It's important to keep this in mind while on your wiki. So you might be wondering, where can I find a wiki's guidelines? On many wikis, the term guidelines and policies are used interchangeably. Many wikis have a link to their policies in their navigation, generally under the community tab. Here you can see an example from the avatar wiki. Their policies are linked from the community tab in their navigation. This is a good place to put them so all users can access them from anywhere on the wiki at any time. Many wikis also categorize their policy and guidelines so that they can be easily found and connected to each other. Here's an example from the Star Wars fan on wiki. So when you first join a wiki, where should you look? I recommend first checking in the links in the wiki navigation, as well as on the wiki's main page. If you're having trouble, contact one of the local admins and ask where to look. If the guidelines are buried, you, you can make a recommendation to the admin to put them in a more obvious location. So what guidelines, what should guidelines refer to? Guidelines can refer to almost anything on the wiki, but there are three general areas that tend to emerge. Content, style, and behavior. Content guidelines focus on the content that is added to the wiki with the most basic addressing the type of content the wiki is focused on. This could be encyclopedic, fan fiction, role playing, or a mix. Including this, as well as what perspective the content is written from, can help to make sure everyone knows how and what to contribute. Content guidelines can also cover image use, categorization, protection, and deletion. Here's an example from the My Little Pony Wiki. They have a guideline on how to write about fiction, since the My Little Pony show is a fictional show on TV. Their guideline describes how to write about the characters, the tense to use, and much more. Here's another content guideline example from the League of Legends Wiki. This is their deletion policy and spells out when content will be deleted. It lists the type of content the community would like to have on their wiki and provides a place for new users to learn why and what might get deleted. Style is another major area for guidelines. 
style guidelines most often apply to how a page is formatted, the designs of tools like templates, or a wiki's entire CSS or JavaScript. Here's an example from the RuneScape wiki, which outlines how a quest page should be styled. It provides the code for the template that should be used, as well as what type of content to include. This type of guideline helps to keep similar pages looking like each other. A third important area are guidelines that refer to user behavior. This can be a bit trickier to develop, but it's important for community interactions. These types of guidelines should not all be about behaviors to avoid, although those will be included, but should focus more on behaviors you want to encourage. Tips on how to work together, how to best use features, how to deal with problem users and vandals, as well as clear consequences for less than admirable actions. Here is an example from the Red Dead Redemption Wiki. Their policy page starts with user policies and states behaviors they want to encourage. The first here is all editors are equal. This is a reminder that everyone on a wiki is equal, no matter what your user right is or your edit count. The second is to assume good faith, to remember to assume that people are most often trying to be helpful, not hurtful. And if they did something wrong, it's likely because they misunderstood rather than doing it to be malicious. And then it goes on and on, some specific to the wiki and some just general for wikis. Now Trello will walk us through examples of good guidelines and how to go about creating guidelines for your wiki. Hi all, I'm Trello and I often work with communities to help build and develop their guidelines. Today I'm going to provide examples of good guidelines, guidelines you should avoid, and how to work through the process of developing them. So to start, good guidelines are positive, concise, and written in a clear manner. Here's an example of Community Central's guidelines. As you can see, the most important guideline to us is for users to feel that they can participate. Next, we want to make sure that the community as a whole is accepting of those who jump right in. Now let's explore the good guidelines for content, style, and behavior. So for content, start by thinking about the content type you want to see on the wiki. Does your community want to focus on encyclopedic content, or would you like to integrate fan fiction as well? Once that's decided, you can get into more details, such as how to name pages, as well as images, what categories should be added to these pages, and what qualifies for deletion. Here's an example from the Glee Wiki. They list what they accept as appropriate content for their wiki, what they feel, does, what they feel don't, doesn't belong in the proper manner for page creation. I recently worked with this community, and they've done a good job in building out clear and concise guidelines. Now let's look at style guidelines. My main point of advice here is not to make your style requirements too complicated. Styling templates and using CSS can get complicated very quickly, especially for new wiki editors. Try to keep your style guidelines basic with explicit directions on how to apply them. Here's an example from the Final Fantasy wiki. You can see how they apply color to their tables along with the code for this color. Providing this information helps users make sure they chose the right one. And last, but certainly not least, behavior guidelines. As Sarah mentioned earlier, it's important to start by focusing on the types of behaviors you want people to follow. Those we highly recommend are assume good faith, be bold, and don't feed the trolls. By this, we mean if there's a problem user, do your best to undo their bad edits and ignore them. Most trolls are just looking for a reaction, so by not giving them one, you are stopping their gratification. Once you build out guidelines for what constitutes a block, admins can assess the situation and apply the proper block if needed. Here's a good example from the Call of Duty wiki. They list the behaviors of what they would like users to display, actions to avoid, and behaviors they discourage. The first guideline they list is to be bold. This encourages users not to be afraid and edit and to jump right in. This is a behavior we hope all editors to embrace. So what should you avoid when writing guidelines? Avoid yelling at your community, coming off too harsh or uncompromising. Make sure your guidelines all align and aren't directly contradicting themselves. Remember, guidelines will change and mature as your community grows. So don't worry about getting every little thing covered from the beginning. Focus first on being clear about the process and expectations, and then let the guidelines grow from there. So you might be wondering, how do I start this? 
I will now walk you through some advice on how to get started. So to start, you need to write down your proposal and make sure your community sees it. You want to start this conversation on a talk page, forum thread, or whatever place you want your community communicates the most. For some wikis, this may be on a blog post or a talk page thread. Start with a fair, neutral policy, one that doesn't point fingers at others and simply states the goal of the guideline. Then make sure the community sees it, especially the local admins. Here's an example from the Degrassi wiki. Sansei, another Wikia community team member, recently helped them create new guidelines. She kicked off this conversation with a blog post, which the community then used to discuss their thoughts and how to build out the local guidelines. Once the conversation's been started, it's important to move towards a wiki-wide consensus. Consensus means the majority of a wiki is in favor of the proposal, not just a direct vote that wins by a few votes. This may mean that you need to adjust the guidelines and comp compromise on sections of it. Focus on discussing the actual guideline, providing reasons of why you feel a certain aspect should or shouldn't be included, with clear explanations and the best intention. The result should be that the most number of users are happy. You also want to make sure that those who want to, that they may be most passionate about the particular topic are aware of the discussion. Give the discussion enough time to develop so all those who want to participate can. I do recommend setting a deadline so that this discussion doesn't go on forever and a clear guideline is developed. Here you can see a good example from the Camp Half-Blood Wiki. They dedicate a specific part of their forum to consensus building, providing a place to build, comment, and update guidelines for the wiki. Once a consensus has been built, it's time to finalize the decisions you made. We recommend that an admin writes up the final guidelines. They should be placed in a public and obvious location, such as the main page or wiki navigation. You can use the community and corner to inform others of a new guideline or update has been made. You can link back to where the decision was made, and I recommend viewing these decisions from time to time just to make sure they're up to date. Here you can see an example from Dragonvale. They recently updated some of their guidelines, so they're listed in their community corner. And last, but certainly not least, remember that community is the heart of a wiki. Without the community, a wiki is not nearly as successful. So make sure you, you keep that in mind as you develop, use, and enforce your wiki's guidelines. Awesome, thank you, Trella. Um, I want to encourage everyone now to um, send in any questions that you have. Uh, we only have gotten a couple, so feel free if there's any sort of um, situations you kind of want to be talked through or advice on how to handle um, certain types of users or how to build out um, specific types of guidelines. We're happy to um, answer those now. Um, also, before we start the questions, I just want to let you know about where you can watch recordings of webinars as, that, as well as sign up for future ones. So um, if you go to Community Central, there's a page called Webinars. This shows um, recordings of all the ones we do. We generally do a webinar once a month um, and also has links to signing up for the next one. So the next one is actually on October 19th and it's all about how to create an awesome main page. So uh, we hope to see you there at that. Um, so don't be shy of your questions, but the first one that we got was, um, and maybe Trella will pose this to you and then we can kind of chat about it. Um, how do I deal with a vandal who will not stop after being warned? Um, so with vandals, you know, it's always nice to have a proper warning, depending on what the vandalism is, if they're just kind of making the same, you know, edits over and over again and you're asking to undo them. Um, after a warning or two, it may be best just to block them. You know, they've had the proper time to just say, hey, this isn't, you know, what our community's about. This isn't what this wiki's about. Uh, and give them a block. And Trello, when you say warning, what do you mean by a warning? Like, what, what's a good example of a warning? Should I put, like, never come back here ever again on their <laughs> talk page? Or what kind of warning would you recommend? Um, so for a warning, you want to write on their talk page, hey, I saw your editing the Pinkie Pie page on the My Little Pony wiki, and you put that Pinkie Pie is a green pony. Uh, that's not true, so I rolled back your edit, and you continued to write that she's a green pony. Um, you know, this isn't clear, and if you'd like to discuss it, we can talk about it here, but 
you know, if you're going to keep doing it, it's it's not correct information. Yeah. So good things with warnings are stating, you know, what the problem was. Um, if there is a local guideline, which hopefully there is about, you know, if people, you know, one of them is assuming good faith. Right. So just saying, hey, I saw you make this change, mm -hmm. you know by the way, your change is wrong, you know, kind of pointing out where the problem is and then also giving them, you know, sometimes a solution. Hey, check out this page. It gives more information on how to contribute well here. Right. Um, what kind of, so once you've warned someone, um, what is blocking and what does that mean? Um, so blocking is preventing a user from editing a wiki. So that is actually blocking their username or if they're anonymous, blocking their IP address. Uh, so when they try and log on to your wiki, again, this is the block would only be restricted to your wiki. Um, they would not be able to perform an edit or comment. Okay. And what, what do you sometimes recommend for blocking if someone's kind of, you know, what would you put in your guideline that might be a good recommendation for someone, you know, who's producing some vandalism? Again, um, it really depends on the kind of vandalism. If they're doing something and you've asked them to stop, you know, maybe give them a couple day ban just to say, hey, I'm being serious, you know, mm -hmm. cut it out. Um, you know, if they're being really bad, if they're spamming curse words or deleting pages, that probably warrants a, a longer ban uh, just because, you know, they're being malicious. Um, okay. So um, another thing, just so everyone knows, a, a really great resource that we have out there, and I think who are listening on the interwebs here, is we have an amazing uh, volunteer group called the Volunteer Spam Task Force, or VSTF for short. And um, if you're dealing with a really bad vandal and having a hard time tracking them down, you can contact them at vstf.wikia.com, and they will help you clean up spam and help you deal with um, really kind of vicious vandalism vandals so um you can also always contact staff so if don't um you know if you're if you feel a little overwhelmed and people aren't following following the guidelines feel free to reach out to staff as well and you can reach out to staff at special contact yeah so any any page on your wiki if you just add the special contact to the end of the name of your wiki url um you'll be able to email us directly um, so there's another question. How do I handle repeated sock, pup, sock puppetry? So a sock puppet, if you guys aren't familiar, is basically someone who create, it's the same person creating multiple accounts. Um, this is kind of handled in the same way as vandalism. So, you know, sometimes on some wikis, and this might actually be part of your guidelines, is people do allow um, each other to have different usernames. So sometimes if you have a fan fiction part of your wiki, someone might um, create two accounts, one for fan fiction work, one for non fan fiction work. Um, or on role play wikis, sometimes people have multiple accounts for different characters. Yeah. Um, but most often it's when someone's trying to kind of evade a block. So basically, I think if you suspect, suspect someone of doing that, contact staff and we have tools to actually look that up and see if someone is, you know, using the same email address for multiple accounts or. Um, even the same IP address, um, and we can help you um, to find that out. And then we would recommend blocking um, that person, the um, IP, the yeah. IP as well. Um, uh, just uh, is there a PDF available of the webinar? There, I I don't have a PDF um, currently. There is the slides will be put up on community um, on that webinar page. But if you email in. Um, whoever that is, to special contact, I'm happy to email you back a, a PDF. Um, but I just upload, um, I usually just upload the, the slides and you can check them out on the page where we'll also have this recording. Um, a suggestion from the crowd, actually from Naruto, an admin on Naruto, suggests that um, uh, one of the things you also want to do in kind of this positive guidelines is suggest ways that people can get started on a wiki. So for everyone who's experienced, you know there's a million ways to contribute, but sometimes new folks aren't really sure where to start. So actually, that's a really great suggestion is just like we have positive guidelines like assume good faith and be bold, sometimes you need to kind of point people in the right direction of being bold. So you might want to have guidelines on where to get started, how to edit. Um, right. I know when I was first starting editing wikis, I was really terrified to hit that edit button because I was afraid I'd mess something up. So, you know, giving people advice to start small and maybe just find some spelling errors or, you know, 
if you want to focus on images, sometimes right. um, a lot of times there are pages, you know, if there's a character page and there's not an image yet, you can start there of trying to get each page to have an, to have an image on it. So kind of small and if your community, you know, is focused on, you know, some sort of content drive, put that up and really try to, you know, ha spread, you know, what help needs to be done. Um, question, what if admins make unreasonable guidelines? Um, <laughs> this will likely happen at some point in the uh, game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we've seen a lot of issues of that. Um, so if there's guidelines in place that your admins made and you and the rest of the community aren't happy about it, bring it up with them. You know, if there's an issue or a guideline you don't like, you know, be vocal about it. If you don't talk about it, it's not going to get changed. Yeah. Start a discussion. Um, a good place to do that, too, is not to just go in and change the guideline. <laughs> what we would recommend doing is go to the talk page of that guideline and leave a note and say, hey, listen, this this guideline of blocking someone um, after, you know, they do a typo seems a little unreasonable to me. Let's figure out a way we can improve it. So I would recommend one, just kind of leaving a message on the talk page and identifying what you think needs to be improved and then also offer a solution. Um, so, you know, hey, I don't think we should block people after one typo. Uh, we should try to give them, you know, point them into help pages of, you know, or a spell checker. Mm -hmm. um, and so make, you know, state what you think is unreasonable about the guideline and then also offer what your solution to that might be. Because um, oftentimes folks won't realize, um, you know, what the problem is unless you kind of offer a solution. Um, another question is, is it okay to co just copy policies from Wikipedia? You're definitely welcome to go check out Wikipedia's guidelines. I would also recommend checking out all of our other wikis guidelines. As we showed some examples here, a lot of wikis have really good guidelines. I think it's great to go check them out, but I would also just try to think about your specific community as well. Some communities, it's not allowed to write role playing. Some wikis you are. So try to find a wiki that's similar to yours and check out their policies feel free to start with their policies and then over time tweak them to better reach your community. Right. I mean, it really depends on the tone of your wiki and your community as well. Like I know uh, Wikipedia has very strict policies and that's just because they're a very formal wiki, whereas Glee Wiki is, you know, more fun and goofy. And so their policies fit with the tone of that wiki. Yeah. And I would also say to always err on the side of less policies rather than more. You don't want to scare people away and put so many policies that all of a sudden they get there and they feel kind of overwhelmed. So I really, you know, we recommend by starting with just a few basic ones, you know, and those positive ones. And then as your wiki grows or certain circumstances kind of emerge, you can then make more guidelines. You know, also <laughs> the thing to think about is here at Wikia, we're constantly updating features and releasing new ones. Not every single feature needs a policy that goes with it. Some of them will, but not, you know, every change doesn't need an adjustment. So um, I think you just kind of have to be a bit fluid with it. Mm -hmm. um, other questions, feel free to send them. I see Bert writing them down for me right now. Um, also, I'd recommend if you have questions, you can always go to Community Central and ask in the forums there or ask in the chat channel there um, what people have advice on. Since we have thousands of wikis, almost every situation that's ever possible has already presented <laughs> itself somewhere on Wikia. So whatever problem you're running into, it's likely that someone else um, has already run into the same exact problem. So. Um, especially if you're on a small wiki um, and, you know, it can feel a little overwhelming to take on everything, come to Community Central and ask in the chat channel or ask in the forums. We have a lot of experienced folks who will say, oh, yeah, the easiest way to do that is like this or on our wiki, we do this. Um, the forums aren't just for technical help. They're also for social help as well. So, you know, don't feel shy. Feel free to ask. What about, so the next question, what about when an admin is inconsistent with enforcing? Um, well, I hope that you have more than one admin on the wiki. Um, if an admin's inconsistent with enforcing, um, maybe it's time to ask them to promote some more people to help out. Um, we recently had that on Dragon Veil. Vale. Uh, we had about three admins for this huge active wiki, and they just felt overwhelmed and just 
things were going by that they just couldn't keep track of. So we were able to promote more people to admin and more people to uh, roll back rights to help with that. So, you know, if an admin's inconsistent, you know, talk with them about that. Yeah. And again, I think it's you don't want to point fingers. You can just say, hey, I see you bought this person for one day and then this person for infinity. You know, <laughs> that seems a little off to me. Maybe we need to tweak the guidelines or maybe, you know, maybe they know something about the person they bought to infinity that's just not obvious. So I think just talking with them, leaving a message, not being accusatory, but more, hey, I just noticed that for some reason, you know, this seems very inconsistent. Right. But they could have, you know. It, like Sarah said, you know, if you notice inconsistency, talk with them about it. They might have just been having a bad day, which is why every single block that day was for infinite because they were taking out their anger on blocking vandals. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's always important to have a conversation. Yeah. Um, and I know at times what can happen is that sometimes it might feel, I wonder if this is your question, um, that people are playing favorites. Um, you know, I think that's something that you can bring up. And also I would bring up with other admins in the admin team. If someone seems to be playing favorites, kind of, you know, talk with the other admins and point this out, you know, and make sure that all of the admins are aware of that. Um, what if someone seems to be ignoring all messages, not just warnings? Think if someone is continuing bad um, wiki editing and behavior and ignoring your warnings, that is fair to block them. You know, if they're if they're causing problems on the wiki um, and they aren't responding, then I would recommend blocking them. And depending on the severity of what they're doing, you know, if they're uploading inappropriate images, they should get a much longer ban than if they're just you know, <laughs> making, you know, making a small edit problem. So, um, you know, blocking exists for a reason and, and does need to be used. So, you know, if someone is causing a problem, you know, they can be blocked from your wiki. There's a lot right. of wikis on Wikia, and if they want to go to another one, they're welcome to, but sometimes you do need to block people off your community. Um, no more? Okay. Well, these are uh, really good questions. This is kind of one of the trickiest parts with wikis is that usually the social kind of interacting with others, especially those you can't see in person, um, can be hard, but remember that, um, interacting with folks is what also makes wikis amazing so although it can be it can be kind of tough um uh this can be kind of tough at times to handle um it only usually helps to make the wiki uh, be a better place to participate and i just want to also say again that you know you have to be a bit flexible um if you know sometimes there's things that emerge and things that change or all of a sudden your wiki about a TV show gets a new season and you didn't think it did, you know? <laughs> There's lots of things that always change. So just remember to be flexible. Um, so yes, this is a little shorter than normal. I think someone asked, um, uh, but we think we've covered a lot of it. If you have more questions, feel free to submit them in the next minute or so. If not, we'll let you all enjoy your Fridays um, or Saturdays if you're somewhere else in the world. Just a reminder to come to Community Central. Um, to find the forum, the chat, as well as recordings of this and the slides and transcript. Um, also our next webinar um, you can sign up for, which is how to create a great main page. And we'll actually have a visitor from our community development team who helps to make um, main pages across the site. So he's gonna walk us through all his tips and tricks for how to create a great main page because we know main pages can be a little tricky. So. I want to thank you guys all for coming. Um, and um, and uh, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. A big thank you to both Bert uh, behind the scenes for his help and Chella for presenting today. And this recording will be up soon. So have a wonderful uh, wiki day and happy editing. Bye, guys. Bye.